Check out Love Island, guys. It's giving Love Island couple. Yes, we look cute together. Not even giving Whitney and Medi. <laughs> Anyways, um, Catherine crying, Sammy not really understanding what's going on, and Scott's confusing the hell out of me. Hey guys, it's Morab Morali. Hopefully you guys are all doing well today. Back again with another video. If you have not subscribed, click that button. It is daily and consistent content, and let's get straight into this video. Inject it. <clears throat> Great season is coming on. This, this season, guys, r reminds me of season two. It doesn't remind me of anything else but season two because season two was constant carnage every single day. Something was going on. It's stronger than season five, in my opinion, um, in terms of the quality of content. Like, you know, we were gearing up and season five was very much of a slow start. And in my opinion, it's better than season eight. It's just the fact that timing. If this came on right after season five or instead of season six or seven, it would have been seen as iconic. But because of timing and overconsumption, it's not going to be seen like that because a lot of people are not unfortunately watching this season. It's a shame, but they can catch up whilst we've already watched it. So I want to get straight into the Scott stuff. I am here for Scott and Catherine. I think it's great that they kiss and etc. But I think Catherine would be irritated if she found out that right before Scott took her to the terrace to kiss her, that he went to Leah to reconfirm to her that I still want to get to know you. I still like who you are. Why would you say that to somebody and then go up to the terrace with the other girl? It doesn't make any sense. I don't think Catherine would like that. I don't think Leah would like that. And you know, it's just confusing. What are you trying to do? I don't want him to pursue things with Catherine to prove Sammy wrong. Don't do that. Don't go to and um, kiss her and move to her and tell and tell them all in front of them all that you like Catherine just to kind of prove Sammy wrong. Because if you're trying to focus on proving Sammy wrong, then your ego has won. And it's ego versus ego as a man. When it's the ego of a man is here and there, you're doing it also at the expense of Catherine's feelings. She is somebody also who can get quite upset about things, especially because it's in a very pressurized environment. So I just want him to be authentic with how he likes Catherine. It's early days, he can go with whoever, but you know, I think that it is sleazy to tell a girl, I still want to get to know you, then you take the other girl right up. The next move is to take her right up to the terrace and then kiss her. It just doesn't make any sense. I feel like he likes Catherine more. Um, but something about Scott is weird to me. I don't know what it is. I think his facial expressions show different to his words sometimes um, and his body language. So I don't understand. It's like you haven't spoken to Leah throughout the whole day and a half. And suddenly now you want to go up to her and to be like, I still like you. It's just odd to me. Is it a producer handling? Maybe. Or like, I don't get it. Because if you like Leah, you would have found time to hang with her. So I don't understand that whole triangle situation. It is confusing to me. And I just hope that his likeness and, you know, attractiveness to Catherine is authentic and that he's not just doing it to prove people wrong, wrong or etc. Because that is just, it was a weird move to make, um, to tell Leah and then run to, like, I don't know if you guys agree or disagree with that, but I just find it to be odd. That's what I'm going to say. But um, Catherine has options. Martel as well is also in the game and obviously wants to speak to her and likes her as well. So she's now in a better position. She, and she only got to this position because she realized that when she lost Zach, she had to find somebody. And she went right back to Andre. Had she not done that, she wouldn't be in the villa right now. She played the game, game well at that point, and now she's in a position where there are options. There are a few comments I'm seeing when I review saying that, you know, I can be objectively or subconsciously, sorry, not objectively, I can be subconsciously biased when it comes to Catherine and I shouldn't be there. I hear those comments and I understand it, but I was raised to really just be mindful and support brown and black girls, especially that's just how I'm subconsciously being raised. So, you know, I just feel like when it comes to reviewing and talking about it, there's just an extra layer of like, you know, what's going on? I find it a bit odd or a bit like this, this, that, or is this person okay? Or that's just how I am. So I just feel for her, especially because she got emotional. She was crying in the villa today because Sammy didn't understand that his comment can be double-sided and be seen as him basically calling her clapped and saying that Scott wouldn't find you attractive because you're just X, Y, Z. You ain't that good looking anyways. And he would have gone for Leah. That's why Whitney had to be there with Catherine to pull him up on it. And he wasn't understanding it. And he wasn't getting it. Even when she cried and got upset, he still wasn't understanding it in that moment. He had to deep it and then come back. And I'm glad that he did. And it was probably producers, to be honest with you, because if a girl is crying in front of your face, 
and you still don't care to apologize and make sure that it's okay, it's whatless behavior, it's very weird, it doesn't make any sense. We all know what he meant by that comment and the confidence he had to say something like that is very odd and irritating because you don't realize how many girls in there that you could be hurting when it comes to their feelings, let alone the guys with what you're saying. I think this idea that because they had an argument the day before, it's an excuse. I don't know why, what it is with the world, but we always conflate an excuse with an explanation. They're two different things. Not everything in life is an excuse. It can also just be an explanation for a series of unfortunate events. It doesn't have to be seen as an excuse. I don't know why the world digests it as an excuse. The argument wasn't an excuse for everybody to pick them to as a cop out. It was an explanation for why their relationship does not have communication skills. It was an example. Not only that, but timing as well. Because if Tariq and Ella had that huge argument and Ella stormed off and the next day they had to pick least compatible, Tyreek and Ella are going to be picked. So it also is a timing issue. So I get why Sammy's upset about X, Y, Z, but also I just find it annoying. You say you don't hold a grudge, but you're having 25 conversations about the same situation. You and Jess weren't gonna work anyways, because you also said in your confessionals that, you know, she's not your type, but you know, I know that I'm her type. All this, you know, ego, big headed confidence. So it doesn't make any sense because in your confessionals, you were acting like you weren't even into her anyways. So, are you a big game player? I don't know, I feel like he is. He's obviously getting on well with um, Melissa and you know, they're getting on well, which is good, they're having conversations and it looks like he will just gear that way. Mitch and Jess looks like they're gonna become that couple. I feel like Mitch is just way too forward, talking about my siblings will like you, my mother will like you. In my opinion, that's all just BS. He's just trying his best to stay in the villa and be secure. And you know, she was like, you friend zoned me. And he was like, no, I didn't. Like, I'm like, babes, you did. You preferred Molly over Jess. That's just facts. You were the second option, Jess. And once you leave the villa with this man, you'll be the third, fourth, fifth, sixth option because he might go with somebody else. Even if it comes to Casa more, he will definitely come back with somebody. Like, I just feel like it's just gonna happen. Even she might as well, because I feel like she's not really into it as much. Um, but I feel like he's really like there. In the Tomorrow Night trailer, Zachariah and uh, Molly have, apparently he's, been cheating, whatever. I think the Tomorrow Night trailer made it seem more dramatic than it is. Like, he cheated when he was young. He's much more older now. Once a cheater, always a cheater. I don't know about that, to be honest with you. Like, I, I don't know if that's always true. But all the girls getting onto him were trying to make Molly feel uncomfortable. And Molly's clever in these moments. She's not, she's not as reactive. Um, and when you're not as reactive in those moments, it makes the girls look bad more than her. So she knows what she's doing, in my opinion. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's got it all in the bag. And with Zach or not with Zach, she is going to be in the top three guaranteed. It's similar to Gemma last year. There's always going to be this. And that is my critique for what Love Island has become now. I think that is what my critique has become and what holds the show back in the last, you know, quarter of what Love Island has become. The last three, four seasons, there always is this plant, um, this contestant who has the correct connections um, and they will continue. Not every single person. We saw that guy from Casamore last year whose father was in a boy band. He got dipped straight away, but they didn't need him because they already had one person. But there's always one contestant, especially from the beginning, who has that connection to a celebrity that is affiliated with a company, the channel, the corporation, or not, and may just be a huge celebrity, and their daughter, Asan, can use Love Island as a meal ticket to get to a position to show off their brands. Now, granted, everybody uses the show as a meal ticket, but I feel like, they know that they're entering and will leave right at the finale. And that kind of irritates me because it does take away from the naturalness and the flow and of a show and how organic it can be. It, it, it really does, unfortunately, because I don't feel like Gemma did anything on her, on her season, to be honest with you. And I just feel like it's just, we know that Molly's gonna be there till the end. Like, I doubt they're gonna surprisingly dump her. Um, and that is one critique that I have, especially for the show in the past couple of years. I feel like that's just what it's become. But I'm here for Scott and Catherine and hopefully it just goes in an authentic way. That's just my only hope. I'm glad that Catherine has options, which basically means, guys, Catherine is safe right now. She's not going anywhere. So we're good on that. When it comes to Mehdi and Whitney, I feel like, you know, Mehdi isn't as, like his language isn't affection. Um, that's not his love language. And that just could be his love language or he could be just saying that as like an ex um, explanation or an excuse. What I mean by that is his background is Arab. He looks like, I think he's North African Arab and etc. And from the upbringing that you would have, I don't think as an Arab person, you would be physically affectionate on a reality TV show as much as somebody who's not with that background. 
Um, and I think that somebody, people who have an Arab background, the world doesn't, the world really isn't educated on Middle Eastern people and their backgrounds because Middle East people are normally quite restrictive and can't speak or have the cultural flexibility to have proper conversations on a public level and Sophia and etc. Like where we are restricted, we can't be as transparent on a public level. Um, and I feel like there's an element of that to Mehdi as well, where being a North African person as well, I don't think he, yeah, why are you on Love Island? But I just feel like he's not doing that, maybe because he knows his parents are watching or something, it's a cultural situation, I don't know. But I feel like that's an element to it as well, as to why it may not be, or why he may not be so kissy kissy with Whitney. I feel like he's attracted to Whitney because Whitney's an attractive girl, period. But he may not be all over her, not because he doesn't like her or he prefers something else, but because of maybe a cultural element. I don't know. I feel like that's part of the conversation that, you know, people should have. But I like that Whitney and Mehdi are solid together. And they're growing on me. I keep going back and forth on them. So for me, only time will tell. That's just how I can go with when it comes to Whitney and Mehdi. Um, we'll just have to see. Um, Martel wants to go for Ella and Tyreek's bothered by it or not, not bothered by it but I don't think anything's going to happen anyways I feel like Tyreek and Ella are set I feel like the producers like Tyreek and he has that good character for Love Island I feel like he will be a Casa Amor villain um, absolutely I think he will definitely bring back somebody but I think that he will then return back to Ella I think that's what's going to happen with this Casa Amor I want to see something that we haven't seen before I want to see something guys that we have not seen before when it comes to Casa Amor. It's very predictable. We know what's going to happen. We can tell. Give us something different, guys. Surprise us. Shock us. That's what I want when it comes to this season. I want something different. Let me know your thoughts on when it comes to this, guys. Subscribe to the channel. Click that button. It is daily and consistent content, guys. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Click that button. It's just one click. Let me know what your thoughts are. Comment down below. Like the video. I want to read all your comments. What are your thoughts on Molly and Zach? What are your thoughts on what Scott is doing? Do you agree or disagree? What are your thoughts on Whitney and Medi? What are your thoughts on Sammy? And what are your thoughts on Mitch and Jess? And where would you rank this season? Do you think this season is on par with season two? Do you think it's better than season eight or better than season five? Or do you guys think it's not? Subscribe and I'll catch you guys soon for another review.